tracking tools, uh, especially Converza, because what they do amazingly well is give you an idea of how the quality of calls are. So I'm going to be talking about how you increase the number of calls, but we also want to maintain or even increase the quality of those calls. And how you know the quality of those calls, well, let's just say it's a bit, a bit touchy. So uh, services like Converza are really, really helpful in making sure you're not only getting more phone calls, but that you are getting the right phone calls. As he said, my name is Brian Massey. I'm with Conversion Sciences. Um, conversion Sciences is a pure play conversion optimization uh, agency. We don't do any traffic building or anything like that. We are completely focused on helping you make the most of the traffic that you are getting from a variety of sources. If you have seen me before, you know that I uh, sport a lab coat in almost all, all dealings. And in fact, we wear our lab coats around the office, uh, primarily when the air conditioners turn down too low. We're in Austin, Texas, so it doesn't actually get very cold here. But there's a really good reason why we wear the lab coat. Because when we put it on, we're making a statement that we've left the world of sales superstition. We've left the world of marketing myth. We have left the world of gut instinct, and we've entered the world of data-driven decision-making, in which we are finding evidence in the data that guides our creativity. Here, we call this rigorous creativity. And there's also a scientific basis for wearing a lab coat. There's a science called enclosed cognition, is the science of how what you wear affects your behavior. And based on studies, it turns out that when I put a lab coat on, I actually think I'm a, a bit smarter than I actually am. And I want to make sure that I showed you a picture of me in my lab coat here getting ready for this presentation. Because when you see me in a lab coat, you actually think I'm a little bit smarter than I actually am. So uh, we would expect the number of errors to go down on this call and for you to have just a little bit more respect and tolerance for me when I do make an error. But we've been doing calling a long time, so um, I think we'll have some uh, great advice for you, and I promise not to steer you wrong. My goal here today is this. We want to set your phones on fire. So I love the turnout we've had today. Thank you for showing up. Uh, for those of you that can't stay full presentation or weren't able to make it, you're not listening to this, but it will be available for uh, replay, full replay um, after the webinar, and you'll get that in your email. But if you are on this phone call, you are probably here because phone calls are very valuable to me. To light up the phones for you, literally light them up, I'm going to go through five words, two places, and we're looking to double the revenue, okay? Five words, two places, double the revenue. And I'm going to start off with a little bit of story. So this is one of the clients we started with back in 2011. They're still working with us. But at this time, you may remember the, the rollout of the Panda and Penguin algorithm changes. And they got hit particularly hard. Here you can see the, um, the, the blue is 2011. The orange is 2012. They were down quite a bit from the previous year. 74%, 27%, 46%. But if we look at the relationship between traffic and revenue for that same period, we see this. So even though their traffic was down over that period of time, we were able to begin applying these phone call rules to their traffic. And so even though their traffic was going down, they were actually seeing an increase in phone calls by applying these five rules. What we want to do is we want to divorce your conversion, we want to divorce your conversion rate from your traffic. We want to div divorce the number of phone calls you're getting from your traffic. And in terms of conversion rate optimization in general, whether we're optimizing for phone calls, for purchases, for form fills, we want to divorce that from the traffic that you're getting. And that's exactly what we were able to do with this client. Um, I founded Conversion Sciences in 2007. As I said, we're a pure play conversion optimization agency. Uh, we provide the a turnkey solution, the team, the uh, developer, the designer, the data scientist, and the QA and, and test techs that you need to have a rapid, repeatable, and high momentum testing process, finding more phone calls in the tra traffic that you're already getting. I wrote the book here, Customer Creation Equation, and 
as I said, I'm a lab wear fashion model. I think they're very, very slimming, these lab coats, don't you? I would love it if you would come and join us on the Conversion Sciences blog. That's where we write about all the stuff we're learning. You'll find these tips and many, many more on the Conversion Sciences blog. Okay, so I want to cover the five rules that we use when we begin optimizing for phone calls. Number one, why do the rules matter? I'll tell you what the rules are, surprise, surprise, and then we're going to talk about how you can apply them with some examples. I want to highlight this though. So the clients that we service that prize phone calls over form fills, value them at 700 percent. They would they would give up seven form fills in exchange for one phone call. The reasons for this is that phone calls don't go cold. Uh, when a form is filled out, you still have to go through the effort of reaching out by email or ca calling that person and hoping that they'll pick up the phone. And, uh, well, leads go cold. Phone calls don't because you're on the phone with them uh, as long as you have a well-staffed and, and a good plan for managing the phone calls that you're getting. Phone calls are immediate and they are intentional. So when I pick up the phone, I am raising my hand high, high in the air that I believe I might be able to solve my problem with what your business offers. Um, and I am going to solve it now. So we spend a lot of money getting clicks to our site. This can be pay, pay per click ads, this can be display ads, this can be real world ads, this can be search engine optimization with all the content that we and optimization that we do. But we are putting money into getting people here. In a lot of these businesses, these are very competitive keywords. So the traffic that we're getting has lots of options. If we can get them to the site and get them to pick up the phone, we win. If they go and fill out a form on, on one of your competitor sites and come to you and pick up the phone, you are going to win because as wonderful as websites are, human beings are better at closing business and they're better at upselling for those of you that are taking calls for and that are offering upsell people are buying. So the phones are, are close to our minds. Our phones, when we pick up the phone, we know that we are uh, in the process of purchasing something or answering those last few questions between us and making a decision. So let me talk about some of the myths that go along with phone calls. Um, and I think a lot of you guys will relate to this. If someone wants to call you, they will. So why don't we just put the phone number somewhere they can see it? Well, it turns out that this is not true in our tests. Phone calls are only important in high value lead gen environments. So phone calls are only important if there's a, a lot at stake. These are expensive uh, or um, they're, we're selling something that is a, has a high average order value. It turns out that is not true. Um, based on your margins, you can definitely leverage phone calls for higher and higher value. Um, most people just put the number in the header or they put it on the contact us page and think people will find it. As I said, uh, people need to be encouraged to call and they won't just call even if they have the propensity to call. Phone calls are just an expense. So um, what you need to do in your business if this is an argument that's being made is actually calculate the value of a phone lead over the value of a form fill. And this can be done a number of ways depending on how long your sales cycle is. But very simply, if you take the revenue generated from the web through phone calls, divided by the number of phone calls, you get a value of each lead. Um, if you take the value of revenue generated that started with a form fill and divide that by the number of form fills, you get the value of that. And if you begin to see, um, this will allow you to compare the value of a phone call against a phone fill. And if that value is much higher, then it makes sense for you to maybe to invest a little bit more in your phone center or in your ability to take those calls. Ultimately though, there is no better brand experience than finding something that you're looking for. And for those people that are going to call, um, having someone on the phone is a brand experience as much as it is a revenue generator. 
Uh, phone calls don't mean more sales. Our customers clearly have demonstrated that human beings are better at uh, closing deals and driving up sales than uh, almost any website can be, as wonderful as websites are. And all you have to do is put a picture of a headset hottie on the site and the phone will start ringing. Well, as it turns out, we call this business porn. This is stock photography, not one of your employees. And while it is, it has, it is an icon, so people see it, they understand uh, that they can call or live chat. It seems to be being used interchangeably. This is not enough to get people to pick up the phone. So if you've committed to phone calls, and for a lot of reasons we think you can, uh, we think you should rather, uh, these myths, don't let these myths derail you. So as we're going through this, I want you to think about some things. Here's kind of how we approach this. There are three kinds of people who will come to a website that is trying to increase the number of phone calls that you're getting. Um, a percentage of them are absolutely going to call. They're looking for a reason to call. They would like to call. They prefer to call. Um, the segment of the modes of persuasion that we call humanists uh, really value relationship and you'll find that you'll have a better chance closing them and engaging with them um, because they are interested in relationship and the phone is a great way to build a relationship with another person. So the first set is people who will call, they're going to call no matter what, no matter what we do, they're going to call. The second group is those people who are never going to call, they just don't want that human touch. We often see this with the, the logical decision makers, the competitives and the, the methodicals. Um, they abhor the human touch and they do not want to talk to anybody. They might chat with you, but ultimately if they're going to take action, it's going to be through an online purchase or filling out a form. And of course, the last group is those people who could be enticed to call um, if given the right incentives. So our goal through all of this is to obviously not scare away those people who want to call, uh, to not significantly reduce the form fields, not reduce the form fields below the value of the phone calls for that middle group that will only fill out the form, and to make sure that those people, as many of those people that would call or could call, are incentivized to call. So these five rules that we're going to go through for more rings follow this pattern. Number one, you got to nail the offer. And this is really true of almost all marketing. You've got to have the offer right. And I'm going to take you through some steps that we use to outline a testable series of offers so that you can find those right offers that generate the additional phone calls. You've got to put the offer in the right places. And we want to harmonize the elements, which I'll go into. Uh, this is actually really, really powerful, and especially if you have uh, in a situation with phone calls, we often have multiple offers on the pages. Fill out a form. Um, pick up the phone. And if we can harmonize the elements and get people to the right part of the uh, website, we can really drive home on what it is they're interested in and want to talk about on the phone. Measure to the money. We're going to geek out a little bit uh, on how you can measure phone calls all the way back to the dollars, which is really important. And as I said earlier, understanding the quality of the calls you're generating is important. Uh, we'll talk about services like Converza. Uh, and then finally, Master Mobile. We are, um, there's still a lot of businesses that have their head in the sand around mobile. It's growing, but it converts terrible. Well, as it turns out, uh, especially when we're optimizing for phone calls, this is a deadly, deadly mistake. First of all, let's talk about nailing the offer here. Uh, you probably suck at <laughs> the offer that you're, you're making. Uh, I'm sorry to say this so, uh, so boldly. but. Let me give you a few guidelines about how you can find your way to the offer that will work. Because the offer that will work is going to be very different from the offer you think will work in most situations. <clears throat> what we're looking for in op to build an offer is, number one, we want alignment. So it has to be aligned with what the visitor expects. And this is typically about keeping promises, keeping promises made in ads, keeping promises made in links as, you, they, care, as they carry through your website uh, in pursuit of a solution. Emotion. So, um, as we talked about, there's a, there are segments that could be persuaded to call, there are segments that are going to call, and these folks are more going to be more relationship oriented. So emotion really can come into play here more so than a more stale or logical call to action, just as fill out this form or uh, add to cart.
making sure that we're very, very clear on the call to action and providing value, providing value within this, these calls to action. So here's an example. Uh, if I do a search for in-home elder care, here we have a great lead generation opportunity. Phone calls are very valuable. The uh, result of a successful sale is um, uh, very, very um, expensive, so it has a high average order value. Um, the phone calls are very, very valuable. Senior care in your home, care and comfort in your home, complimentary in-home assessment. So we've made a promise here. Uh, there is a benefit and a very specific call to action, complimentary in-home assessment. And we bring them to a page. This is a pretty typical approach for folks generating leads uh, in spaces like this where they bring you to a directory page. Call us today. There is no mention of this complimentary in-home assessment. There is no repetition of the care and comfort in your home. It just says call us today. The big headline here says full service listing. There's a featured testimonial. Uh, so there's a definite disconnect. There is not a relevance that we have here. These are not aligned. Contrast this with uh, homestead, home instead senior care. Uh, peace of mind with our high quality care. Call in Austin, Texas. So this is geo-targeted, very nice. We bring them to a page where it says struggling with care for loved ones. So we've mentioned um, peace of mind previously. This is this is a little bit more negative approach to this, struggling with care for a loved one. But we haven't just said call us. We've tried we've tied the knot to the ads, and this could be probably even better targeted. And there are probably ads that are a better match for this landing page. But we didn't just leave the person. Providing care to Greater Austin, Round Rock, and Georgetown. So we've reiterated that geographical point as well. So this is a better match. This is a better alignment. Make sure that the pages that you're bringing traffic into are aligned with the promises that you're keeping and that at each step on your website as people click, you are keeping the promises that you're making. Let's look at another one. Palm Springs, California Drug Treatment Centers. Palm Springs, California, drug treatment centers, I love the SEO stuff here, alcohol rehab programs and dual diagnosis treatment facilities, comprehensive listings of addiction treatment. That is our promise. Well, we bring them in here and it brings them to the featured uh, one. There was We didn't actually ask or talk about Desert Palms treatment, but we brought them to a page in which that appears to be the most important thing. Uh, so there is a disconnect in the alignment. Up at the top is a great place to place an offer that would tie the alignment together. And so we did a test. We wanted to see which of these calls to action would tie as close as possible to the paid search ads and the organic ads that were bringing people here, the organic listings. Don't waste this moment. Call now. Recovery is just one phone call away. Healing your family starts with a single phone call. Call now to speak with an addiction treatment professional. Call now for a confidential addiction assessment and for immediate treatment help call. Now, what's the one thing you're noticing about all these things? We're asking them to call in the call to action. Asking them to call in the call to action. In all these situations, a form fill is a perfectly valid way of moving forward, but we are emphasizing the calls. When we did the test, we found out that for immediate treatment help call was the winner. Um, and at some point, I'm going to illustrate how important it is that the phone number be in the headline. So we've put this in a place where it is front and center. It's the top of the page. It is high contrast, large font, bold. This looks like the headline for the page, even though it's technically a call to action. But this allows us to align what we're about with the promises we're making out in ad land and in our organic search listings. Incidentally, to, to test this, uh, we had to make this a, a graphic um, so that the, the search engine didn't get uh, different phone numbers and, and read those. So just some tricks there that if you are testing for phone numbers and you're placing phone numbers in the headlines, you may find yourself resorting to um, uh, using graphics instead of text headlines in order to facilitate that and not confuse the search engines on what your phone numbers are. So this was the winner, and this was a 57% increase in phone calls. Now, I don't know what you value your phone calls at. Uh, we've worked with people who value them all the way from $20 to over $350. So a, uh, 
a near half a guinea of your phone calls with a simple change to the top of the page is a pretty uh, striking advantage. First thing you should test on your site is putting that phone number in the headline. So we talked about alignment. Let's talk a little bit about emotion. We tested a few headlines as well in this space, the addiction center treatment, addiction treatment center space, to see if we could uh, lend some emotion. So this is a little quiz for you. Uh, I wish we had done this as a poll, actually, Brett. This would have been a lot of fun, but um, I'll talk through it. So, which of these do you think had the most uh, had the, uh, the most increase or decrease? in phone calls. Remember, optimizing for phone calls. So, can we help call was our control. Speak with a compassionate rehab specialist call. Ready to start healing? If so, we can help call. Or ready to stop lying to yourself about addiction? We can help call. So take a moment, pick yours, B, C, or D. You ready? All right, here's what we found in a split test. Speak with a compassionate rehab specialist generated a 32% increase in phone calls. This is huge in this space, as I uh, point I made earlier that these phone calls are so valuable. Uh, this was an amazing win, and we think that the compassionate rehab specialist brought enough emotion in so that these visitors felt comfortable, more comfortable calling. Ready to start healing? actually reduce the number of calls. This is what we call a conceptual headline, and unfortunately a lot of us marketers tend towards these things, a place of new beginnings. Ready to start healing? Let the breezes of, of healing flow over you, or something like this, where we really have to, uh, like art, interpret it in order to extract meaning. So we are not a, a fan of these in most cases, it still makes sense to test one of these because we do see them occasionally win. This was the most ex d d dangerous one that we tested and um, I would say hats off to our client for allowing us to test this. Are you ready to stop lying to yourself about addiction? A 43% increase in phone calls. Um, quite striking. Now, uh, there's a couple of hypotheses we have for why this works. First of all, ready to stop lying to yourself is a big wake up. It wakes up the, the bouncers in our brain that, that filter out the things that are predictable or familiar. Uh, very rarely, there are probably no other sites you're going to go to where the, the headline is going to ask you if you're ready to stop lying to yourself. And if you know something about addiction specifically, it, ap it appeals both to the addict and to the family of the addict because there is a collusion of denial that goes on in these addic addicted relationships. So anyway, this was uh, obviously, uh, we were really pleased with this and this told us for this client that emotion really did play an important part and, and that we should focus on that. So once we have those calls to action in the workforce, we want to make sure we put them in the right action, in the right places. So if you look at this as a kind of a, a wireframe of a typical landing page that we use, we always put the phone number in the upper right. That's where people look when they want to go. That first group I talked about that we're going to call no matter what. Great to put it also in the footer. Uh, logo, navigation, hero image, content. Typically there is a form to fill out right there at the top of the page, as close to the uh, the fold is above the hold as possible, trust symbols that support the purchase, uh, and then this um, scannable content that, allow, that uses headers, I'm sorry, content headlines and content subheadlines uh, so I can scan through and see what's going on. So what we do is we uh, upset this a little bit. We take the headline at the top. Um, we choose our, we use our winning call to action and we make sure that we always have the phone number in the headline. It needs to be big, bold, and it turns out that the uglier it looks, in other words, the higher contrast it is, uh, the more likely it is to be seen. Then we also repeat that about 75% down the, the page. So it'll depend on the design of your page. A lot of these pages have our long form content. Uh, both for the visitor's purposes and for SEO. So uh, if you have short form content, it may be very close to the bottom, but repeating it is something where I would always test because that person that is scrolling down and reading is engaged, needs to be reminded that they can take action. So here's an example from our uh, treatment center client. You can see here there's the top half of the content. Here's what the bottom half looks like. There's a, a map showing the area. Um, 
and so here's our winning call to action. And then we also have this space at the bottom. So this didn't lend itself as well to the 75% down the page rule. Uh, but this is what we call a dripping pan. Someone who has read all the way to the bottom is probably really, really interested. And so um, we want to repeat an offer at the bottom. Now, we wanted to test the offer at the bottom, see if there was any different call to action. People who are scrolling to the bottom are different, believe it or not, than people who stay at the top. So for immediate treatment help, don't waste this moment was one of the things we put in there. Recovery is just one call away. Stop wasting time. Uh, confidential addiction assessment. We tried a number of things and found out that for immediate treatment help call was again the winner with a nice 13% increase. Uh, so, you know, when you see that your call to action is winning multiple times, you begin to build confidence in that call to action. So I think we've got the, the, the elements here. There's value there, immediate treatment help. There is uh, clarity. We're not beating around the bush. It is treatment help. There is emotion. Um, not so much in for immediate help call. Um, but as you saw in other, uh, in other sites, we are able to use emotion uh, more strongly. And then it should be well aligned with the sources of the traffic. So now let's harmonize the elements, which means we want things working together. And we're going to um, kill a few sacred, sacred cows here as well. There really are no such things as best practices. They're only good ideas to test. And if you're not testing, then you're probably copying, um, you're probably copying the, bad, the worst ideas of your competitors. So let's do a little analysis here too. Um, those of you that have been optimizing for phone calls or driving phone calls from the website, let's see how good you're your understanding of this element is. So we're looking at the form that goes on a page. Now keep in mind, for this test we are optimizing for phone calls, but we wanted to explore how the form interacted with the visitor. In the first one we have the control. Uh, we have a, a long form, ask some very probing questions. They're looking for well-qualified form fills so um, they don't hold back everything from uh, your detail information and age to whether you are involved in legal issues, uh, if you've been in rehab before. Uh, so it's some pretty um, nasty information. And at the top it says get help now. Call us toll free or simply fill out this form and we will get back to you as soon as we can. So even though there's a form here, um, this company knew to ask for the phone call because that's what they prized. We did a little variation on this. Now we didn't change the form itself, but we just changed the call to action at the top. We changed, instead of get help now, exclamation point, uh, we changed it to get help by calling our rehab helpline. And the copy under that says, remember, it's better if you call us and take real action. And this sort of thing was really important. Take real action right now. However, if something is truly preventing you from calling, then fill out this form and we'll get back to you as soon as we can. So we kind of put this pouty face on, like, oh, if you can't call us, all right. The other thing we wanted to test was, what if we made the form shorter? How would that affect phone calls? Uh, naturally, we would expect a shorter form to be filled out more frequently, um, and that could have a, a detrimental effect on phone calls. But if we did this test and found out that phone calls remain the same uh, and we got more form fills, then that's a win-win as far as we're concerned. And then, of course, the obvious one is no form. If we want phone calls, why not just take the forms off? So we thought we would give that a try. All right, so pick your winners and losers here because there are plenty of both. You ready? So taking the form off, completely taking the form off, caused a 56% drop in phone calls. In phone calls. A 56% drop in phone calls, not form fills, because form fills obviously went to zero. That's a noodle scratcher. If we put a short form on there, phone calls dropped by 67%. This makes sense. Of course, form fills went through the roof, um, but uh, not to the tune of 7 to 1. So how about our two long form solutions? Did our, did our test at the top help at all? Yes, it did, plus 
And keep in mind again, this is considered a significant win. And it seems that the uglier and nastier that we make the form, the more our phone calls go up. So why is this? Why is it that there has to be a form on the page, which would seem to be a distraction, a potential distraction, in order for us to get phone calls? And why does a nasty form increase the number of phone calls? Well, obviously, the, the form fill for those who are on the fence who would call if persuaded, their first and easiest path to resistance is the form. And so the form is bringing them there and cajoling them with this take real action right now messaging um, and encouraging them to go ahead and pick up the phone. So uh, it's almost like a beacon, like an icon or an image on a screen that draws the eye to the call to action. Here the form is doing that and it's providing its own stopping point by looking really nasty uh, and um, difficult to fill out. So I'm going to skip past this one. This is kind of a, 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 a unique situation. Bear with me, bear with me. We don't usually do two calls to action. That was a, a unique one for a particular market segment. So the other thing we're going to do in terms of harmonizing is using complementary space to handle parallel objections. Parallel objections. So when someone's coming, especially on a landing page, we aren't sure what their primary objections are. We begin to understand through our testing what the big deals are. Uh, in the case of treatment centers, we've got this page that is working. We've got a, a nice bump by adding the call to action at the top, adding it at the bottom as well. Um, over on the right, we've got get help now, and it says click here for help. So it is a re repetition of the call to action, but it's not one of our winners. It's just a, a, a poor use of this part of the page. Uh, right up there at the top, confidential online assessment. We uh, knew from our testing that finance was a big deal. So it wasn't the, necessarily the first thing that came to people's mind, but how am I going to pay for this? As I'm reading through and being convinced that this could save my loved one or save me, from my addiction, how do I pay for it? So we put this up there, and we got a 15% lift simply by addressing this. So uh, this tells us that some percentage of people, the large percentage of people this is important to, and if we address it up front, that 15% of them, more 15% more of them are likely to uh, fill out a form, or in this case, call us. The uh, rule number four is to measure to the money. So we're not measuring engagement, we are not measuring um, uh, time on site. We're not measuring pages visited. We are not measuring click-throughs. We want to measure phone calls. And we want to have some way of measuring the quality of those phone calls. So tracking, doing the testing, calculating the value of the, uh, the visitors. And uh, Brett, I owe you an apology because I have not yet switched out log my calls, which was um, one of the founding companies of Converza, so uh, yeah, I apologize for that. Uh, but these are some of the options that you have out there for measuring phone calls. Dialogue Tech is, a, is the, the marriage of um, If By Phone and Mongoose Metrics. Log my calls. Did you guys um, rebrand, or did you? Um, was there a merger or an acquisition involved? Yeah, in so the acquisition of Log My Calls and Call Source. I do know that when y'all came out with the uh, as Converza, that your um, your feature set significantly increased, and that's why I asked. Yeah. So. Yeah. Um, so um, for us, our clients often choose their um, call tracking system. Sometimes they're not workable. You're going to see some of the moving parts that go on behind the scenes. Uh, but what we want to do is, whenever we um, generate a phone call. It's best that we can see it in Google Analytics or in Adobe Analytics, depending on what you're using, so we can track behaviors to that phone call. And we need to be able to see which treatments, uh, which of these headlines, for instance, is winning and how it's, how it's related to all of the other sessions in our, our database. So when we you saw that we tested um, six to eight different headlines, the way we did that was each of those experiences had a different phone number. And the call tracking software tracks that phone number and, is, and um, allows us to uh, hit a, a web page that 
registers that, so that, that we did have a phone call generated from that particular headline on that page. Um, so we can track things like this. And we can even track down to the keyword how many visits came from different keywords and what the conversion rates were and which treatments it was that that keyword converted for. So we, this post call to action configuration, this is a little bit of software that we've actually developed that helps us assign numbers to treatments and then us, uh, do the hard work of making sure that we are getting data back to our A-B testing tool, which is in this case Visual Website Optimizer. We also work with Optimizely, we work with Marketizator, uh, we work with Convert.com, there's a number of, of options out there. But we want to make sure that this data gets back to those testing tools so our statistics can be calculated, gets back into our analytics package so we can do post-test analysis and see what segments uh, might be affecting things. And that's what this is required. So um, when you are selecting your call tracking software, you want to make sure that you are selecting software that has an integration uh, with these other with with these other tools as many as possible. So for those of you that are geeks, this is some of the um, uh, some of the, the the code that we use to push the information. But we're going to um, you know pick the the the, uh, the test. We're going to push the phone number, um, the result of that. And then um, the re redirection URL is what is used to take the visitor and say, uh, thank you very much. Basically, the visitor calls and their browser is redirected in some of these situations uh, so that they see a thank you page while they're on the phone with uh, the person. So the other thing about this is we want to make sure that we have some metrics on the call quality. So um, are we still closing as many clients who are calling? Uh, one of the that we use is call duration. So if the call is really short, if it's a 30 second or a minute call, it's probably um, a unqualified, someone who's dialing and had the wrong idea. So uh, that's one of the ways we can use. If you're able to uh, integrate with Conversa, they are actually doing voice analysis and text analysis, looking for certain keywords that are markers of a call, and they can actually give you a score. So you have very, very accurate um, an in-depth uh, knowledge of how you're increasing or decreasing the qualities of your scores because we don't want to just flood the call center with a bunch of blah calls and say, oh, look at all the phone calls we generated. Ultimately, we want to generate revenue. Finally, master mobile. Now, you're going to be surprised about this, but mobile phones actually have phones in them. So if phone calls are important, then mobile phones are amazing. And I will tell you this, for the clients that we optimize for phone calls, their mobile traffic converts significantly higher than their desktop traffic across the board, including both form fields and phone calls. So think about that. Their mobile traffic, and almost in every, well, definitely in every site we've ever approached, whether it had a lot of mobile traffic or not a lot of mobile traffic, it always converted significantly lower than desktop and tablet. Uh, for phone calls, that is unacceptable. You should not, ha your mobile sites should convert higher. And in fact, as much as 2x higher. So uh, we're going to talk about carrying the five rules to the mobile site. We're talking about responsive websites. Responsive works, but not just responsive. Tell links, uh, the sticky calls to action, and how you can leverage your menus. So here is the uh, five, here's the, the site we've been looking at. We'll carry the five rules over to the mobile site. And what we found on this, this particular site was that our call to action disappeared because it was an image. So what we did is we added it back in for immediate treatment help call. 26% increase in mobile phone calls. Ta -da! Was that so hard? So all I have to do is carry the things that are working on desktop over. This is the first round. Now, don't get too too excited because not everything that works on desktop is going to work on mobile. In fact, a lot of things are not. So responsive websites. This is uh, the desktop site for another treatment center's company that we uh, optimized. And if you look at it on a phone, this is what it looked like. So this is not particularly mobile friendly. We figured, well, why don't we test it? If we took the time to go to a responsive website, would that increase our phone calls? 
And so we took this page here and we uh, uh, responsivized it. We used our testing tools to inject, inject a little JavaScript that rearranged the buttons so that they got bigger and easier to read on the screen rather than really small and unreadable as you see there to just to the left. And what we found was, oops, my slide is broken here. What we found here was a drop of 19% in phone calls. A drop of 19% in phone calls. So not every responsive website is, is the right response for your mobile traffic. Here's another example of a responsive website. We've got the phone number here. As you saw, the, uh, the control, uh, uh, the call to action is gone. There's no CTA. This also gave us a 19% drop uh, just by simply removing that, that CTA, and we are very sad about that. A uh, very simple thing to do is go ahead and code your uh, phone numbers as telelinks because the browsers do a spotty job of automatically listing them. Most browsers will attempt to spot a phone number, make it um, clickable, and then allow you to call. You should explicitly go in and use the TEL um, uh, colon um, the, the syntax necessary to make that stand out on the browser as a clickable phone call. And just doing that, not leaving it to the browser, gave us a 20% increase in calls for this particular test. We also recommend sticky calls to action. So people are scrolling like crazy on mobile phones. So we like to have a sticky call to action so that when they finally get the information they're looking for, or they get tired of scrolling around, they can click and, and begin a phone conversation. So this just illustrates how this um, sticky header sticks regardless of how far you scroll. We recommend testing header, we recommend testing footer, and you can test a number of things in these sticky headers. You can test the menu, making the menu available. You can test uh, search for the, the directory portion of the website where they're looking for a location, etc. But just making this call to action sticky and available all the time gave us a 9% increase in calls. Here's another place you might consider adding the phone number to the menu. This was a terrible and very distracting menu design, but um, all we had to do was make the phone number one of the menu choices, and we got an 11% increase in phone calls. So can you see how doing this over and over, 10% here, 11% there, 19% there, plus finding the right call to action where you're seeing 20, 30, 40% increases in conversion rate is having this, this incredible impact on the, the conversion uh, number of phone calls that the website is generating. So um, we are coming up, I may have gone a little bit long, let me review very quickly for you. Uh, those people who are committed to phone calls value them as much as 7x form fills. The way to get to double your, your, the number of calls you're getting is to nail the offer, put it in the right places on the page, harmonize all of the elements and sub, sub calls to action, make sure you're measuring to the money so you know you're getting quality calls, and don't rely on your responsive website. It's going to be a customized effort. Take you back through this. We found the offer. That was a 50%, 57% increase. Uh, we harmonized the elements for 17% increase. 15% um, by making the sidebar call, putting something at the bottom, the right call to action at the bottom gave us 13%. Just on these few things for this site, um, we uh, obviously we've been working for a while, we've uh, more than doubled their conversion rates and it's been very, very profitable for them. We are for hire, so if you are dedicated to um, phone calls, our promise is this, work with us for six months during our conversion catalyst process. We're going to find enough phone calls and form fills, not only to pay for our services, put a lot more money in your pocket. It's going to be a no-brainer for you to keep working with us after that six months. Um, you can call us directly at this number, uh, or you can email me, Brian, B-R-I-A-N, at conversionsciences.com. Uh, we also obviously have ways for you to interact with us on our website, so if you're one of those people that just isn't going to call and isn't going to email, visit our site and fill out one of the forms. So, Brett, that's all I've got. Great. Thank you, Brian. Appreciate it. That was great. 
Um, I've got uh, a couple questions that have been uh, in queue here for a while that I think we'll kind of quickly go over and we can answer. Um, the first question is, and this is one I get a lot also, is with uh, call tracking, um, SEO is so important um, with consistent uh, nav your name, address, and phone number across the web. How do we prevent negative impact of different phone numbers uh, in place for call tracking? Yeah, so, and because of the you know because of the tools that we use to do these tests, we use A/B testing tools. They actually change the website in the visitor's browser, and so um, we haven't had a problem with search bots because. Uh, while search bots are interpreting JavaScript, they aren't um, uh, they aren't rendering it. So um, they're all going to see the control. All of the search bot the bots are going to see the control, and we can even go a step further um, and work to eliminate the the key search bots uh, from our tests, so that they're always seeing what's in the control. So the control is what the website looks like right now, and then we use our software to. Um, when the visitor loads it in their browser, we run a little JavaScript, changes the phone number, changes the elements that we're testing. Um, it happens so fast that they don't see the difference if it's designed well, and they see something different than what is actually being shown on, um, you know, to everybody else that's not entered into the test. So, does that answer your question? Yeah, I think that answers it. Yeah, any uh, call tracking provider or anyone that knows what they're doing will use. What we call dynamic number insertion, which does that. It swaps the number out, and so you're not going to have negative effects on SEO. So I think that should answer that question. Uh, the next question was, um, in California, you must have an alert to let caller know that the call is being recorded. Is there some service that only tracks times of calls without recording? Uh, I can answer that with Converzi. Yes, there is. Um, that's a pretty basic service, any call tracking provider will allow you to turn on or off call recording, and any of them will let you also play a disclaimer at the beginning of the call that would say this call may be recorded or monitored for quality assurance, and that would be complying. You could record the call. So um, you still can record in California. You just need a disclaimer, which any most call tracking providers would, would have that. So I think that would answer that question. Um, Oh, this one was here. They just missed the results of the longer short form um, on that. I think the results was that the long form was better, correct? The long or short form, let me just jump back to that. Is it this one? Yeah, yeah I think so. I think that's the one that she's referring to. Yeah, so um, the long forms perform the best, um, and having the right call to action at the top uh, gave us a 16% increase. And we're right. optimizing for calls here, not form fills. All right. Uh, last question, another question I have here. My business is a tour company. Do you have data on the effect of calls with book online features? Book online features. We did do a uh, site redesign with a company that booked um, uh, golf tours in Scotland, uh, so groups that wanted to go on classic courses in Scotland. Um, they also valued phone calls but had the online booking uh, capability. Uh, ultimately, that was a, was a very very custom item. So um, I uh, don't have any specific um, uh, travel industry, hospitality industry uh, data, to tell you the truth. Um, and I suspect it would be very different in a lot of ways from um, uh, like addiction treatment centers is one area that we um, focus on, universities. Uh, so I, I, I think my answer is no, I don't have information on that, but the, the processes that we've used here, the five rules applied to a hospitality website um, are going to guide you to the right direction and help you understand what that combination of because part of what you're doing is understanding the size of your segments. So the, the segment that will call, that wants to call, that just can't book a tour uh, without speaking to a person uh, might be bigger or smaller in your universe depending on your geography and what you're offering. Likewise, the size of that persuadable segment that, that would call if given a good reason but also would fill out the forms or go through the booking process 
Um, uh, that that we want to find out how big that is. So as you go through and apply these five rules, you're essentially understanding the sizes of these different segments. Um, yeah. We have been working with a, um, a resort in Hawaii, and one of the things we found is that if you have a static third-party booking engine, uh, your hands are a bit tied. So it becomes really, really important if you um, if you can't optimize this third-party tool becomes really important that you take your destiny in your own hands and that you try to get folks who are going to call those persuadable that persuadable segment make sure that you are getting them to call because that's when you can take uh, take things in your own hands and the mistakes or the generalizations that your booking engine is making will have less impact on your uh, on your bottom line so I hope that's helpful I wish I had some specific data for you on on calls versus booking online uh, talk to us in about six more months and we will have that information I, I've worked with quite a few online uh, travel companies, and it all these principles uh, would apply directly, or we see uh, great results in that industry. We work quite a bit in it, so I don't know if that helps. Uh, the next question is: Have you ever tested the effects of latency on web response? Latency on web response. So. Um... I wonder if they're talking about uh, so there's two two issues here. Number one is uh, if my uh, page loads more slowly, will that increase or decrease my phone calls? Um, the answer is that in general, uh, well, so there is a uh, there's a, an area of load times for your industry, and it's different for each each um, category of audience for which it won't make a difference. Above which you'll have a significant drop in conversion rate because uh, you'll see a higher bounce rate or a higher exit percentage uh, based on the slow line. Uh, you kind of have to test your way to what that is. Um, but the rule of thumb: you're always going to be safest if you um, you're always going to be safest if you were to reduce that. Sorry about that noise. You're always going to be safest if you were to reduce that. So you're more likely to have an increase in conversion rate in this lower area. Um, and with a difference between two seconds and three seconds, you might find that three seconds actually converts more than two seconds. But once you cross below a certain threshold, um, across above a certain threshold, then you really start to shoot yourself in the foot. Does that make sense? Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, so optimize, get, get your page loading as quickly as possible. Certainly remove any arbitrary, uh, like, you know, if you've got some old code on there that's trying to hit a CDN for a resource that's not there anymore and it's just waiting and waiting and it's holding up the page, then get rid of that stuff. Uh, I recommend webpagetest.org. There's a fantastic analysis of your your pages, uh, what each element is costing, which of those elements is actually impacting the load times, and gives you a grade, A through F, on first by load time, overall load time, um, use of CDNs, and seven, four or five categories of, of information. So webpagetest.org, great resource for improving the performance of your pages. Okay. All right, another question we have here. Do you have a success story with a tech company product? A tech company product, um, it depends on what you mean by that. So there are two broad categories for that. There's a business-to-business -business tech product, which has a long sales cycle um, and generally involves a sales rep and series of phone calls, lots of stakeholders involved in the decision-making process. Um, and this is a huge opportunity always missed by these companies. Um, so we don't work with a lot of these companies because it's a long sales cycle. Uh, makes it more difficult for us to optimize the website, and they don't seem to value the phone calls as much as they should. If we've taken a couple of them through the sales process, through the math of of really what is a phone call worth versus a form fill, most of the marketers are incentivized to increase form fills, leads that go into the CRM from the website with no one interfacing with them. Um, but when they do the math and they see how valuable the phone calls are, it's the, they're they're rolled back and they're like, oh my gosh, I just don't know if we can, you know, if we hire you guys and you, you, you set the phones on fire, you know, will our salespeople be able to handle the, the call? So for them, the issue is usually that fear of getting too many phone calls, which seems like the right problems to have. You can staff for those as you start to see how well you can increase your phone calls. The others is um, uh, technology products that are sold B2C. 
Um, and um, that really depends on the, the product and the, and the make. Um, with technology products, you generally get a savvier visitor. They are generally more interested in taking care of transactions on their phones and things. So uh, they're a little bit more challenge or a little bit lower emphasis on making the phone ring. But if you've got a long sales cycle and a salesperson involved in the process, uh, you are probably way undervaluing your phone calls and could be really knocking it out of the park um, by um, emphasizing those and, and taking some chances to see if you can um, generate the phone calls and if your staff can handle that. So I hope that answers the question. I think it does. And, I, and I'll uh, echo that. We're a uh, tech company that's B2B and we use, of course, drink our own Kool-Aid. Um, and inbound phone calls are our leading uh, marketing source for new sales. Yeah. So, yeah, and to give uh, you an idea, we're we're a relatively small business, um, but um, we do a lot of stuff like this online. Uh, sales phone calls still come to me. They're yeah. that important to us. So if if it's coming to the sales line, it comes directly to me. So call our sales line, you'll get to talk to me directly. <laughs> Yeah, so definitely B2B, it can work, um, but you're thinking outside the box. Traditionally, people don't uh, do it. All right, I think that um, wraps up everything else, um, all the questions that I had. Brian, we really, really appreciate all of your time and your presentation. It was great. We had a lot of positive feedback here in the questions. Um, oh, I can't wait to read it. Thanks very much. Was. And so, uh, like I said, you know, the recording will be sent out, so look for an email or you can go to our website. And then um, if you have any other further questions, uh, feel free to email us back uh, and we can answer those for you. So thanks for all, everyone that attended, and we'll talk with you next week. Thanks, everybody. Thanks for coming. Bye.